Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to go over the basics of the London system. One of the most flexible, most solid and most popular opening systems for white out there today. One of the best openings white could choose and basically half your repertoire if you know what you're doing. Uh, this video is only going to be on the basics and on the main ideas of the London system and I'm going to make another eight videos covering the main setups you can play again against in detail. So what is the London system? Uh, the London system is not an opening. It's not uh, an opening such as the French defense or the Karo Cannon, something else where an, an exact move order makes a difference and leads to different variations. It's an opening setup for white an opening system for white in which white knows what he's doing he's always doing the same thing regardless of what black's what of what black plays and he wants to achieve his london system setup his london system regardless of black, what black is right, trying to do what you see on the board is an example of a london system pawn structure and the london system bishop on f4 these are the two main characteristics of the london system the london system is a pawn setup with pawns on c3, d4, and e3, and the bishop outside of the pawn chain on f4. That's the main idea. You want an extremely solid pawn structure, which cannot be broken easily, while at the same time, you don't want to have a bad bishop stuck on c1. Therefore, it's different to the Colley system and other types of setups in d4 openings where white creates this solid pawn structure because the bishop is already outside. Uh, here uh, is an example of what the London system tries to prevent. In the normal Queen's Gambit, there are lines in which you can develop the bishop outside of the pawn chain, but by playing the move c4 very early on, you have given black the chance to fight for the center more easily. By playing the move c4, the moves c5 and e5 are way more powerful. Also, uh, the move knight to f6 exerts more pressure over d5, and it's in general easier for black to fight for the center when you have already committed your pawn to c4, meaning that it's going to be harder to defend this square, the square d4 and the pawn on d4. So the London system structure is different to the main lines because it doesn't give black such easy ideas. What is, what is the idea behind the opening? So the opening starts after pawn to d4. It's a queen's pawn opening, a queen's pawn setup. Uh, regardless, as I said, what black, of what black does, you are going for the same thing. I'm going to give you uh, an example with pawn to d5 by black, which is the most popular popular response. What you want to do is you want you you want to create your pawn chain with pawns on c3 and e3. Get your bishop outside of the pawn chain and then castle, preferably. There are two different move orders. One of them is with knight to f3, the other one is with the immediate bishop to f4. And I would like to talk about this first because this is a point which is very important. So there is a difference between knight f3 and bishop f4. Here is the main argument. By playing the move knight to f3, and this is why the move used to be very popular uh, when, the when the London system started being played, which is early 20th century. By playing the move knight to f3, you are not committing to anything. By playing the move knight to f3, you are not saying to black, I will play the London system. Here black has several options. Obviously the best one and the most common move is knight to f6. And in this position, of course, white could still go e3, white could go bishop to f4, playing the London system, white could go bishop to g5, playing a sort of Trumpovsky attack, white could go g3, playing sort of a Grunfeld in reverse or a Catalan setup, white could still, of course, play c4, transposing to the queen's gambit main openings. So by playing the move knight to f3, you are not giving away your cards. On the other hand, the move knight to f3 is not important for your setup. The move knight to f3 is not a part of the London system setup, the moves that signify the London system. By playing the move knight to f3, you are basically giving up a tempo uh, in creating your pawn chain. So let's look at an example. After d5, if you start with bishop to f4 and black goes knight to f6 and you go e3, Black goes, let's say, c5, which is one of the most popular moves. You went c3 without hindering your development, without compromising your king. You've simply played the London system before trying to castle. You've simply played the London system before developing your knight to f3. 
this is one of the big things. I'm going to show you one example uh, when that can be important. So let's look at this position. Uh, d4, d5. Uh, and let's start with knight to f3. I'm going to show you one common problem. Uh, knight to f3. Knight to f6 by black. And you now play bishop to f4. C5, these are the moves we have just been looking at, just with the knight on, on f3. Pawn to e3, developing your London system triangle, knight to c6, c3. Black here has the annoying move queen to b6. One of the downsides of the London system, of course, is that by moving your bishop away from c1, you have undefended the b2 square. Therefore, in the London system, the b2 square is going to be one of the tender points in your position. And very often, black is going to put pressure on b2, as in this variation. So now we have to do something. The main move is queen to b3, the main way to defend. And after c4, which is the main move for black, again, we are going to have a detailed look at this variation in the separate video on, on uh, d5 for, for black and all the setups he can play. And here, queen to c2 is played. And the main move for black here is the move bishop to f5. Now, if you take the bishop, then queen to b2, and you can see that you lose quite a bit of material. So this cannot be played. Therefore, the move bishop to f5 is annoying and you have to play queen to c1, which is very passive. Now let's look at the other example. If d4, d5, bishop f4 without knight to f3 is played, then let's go over the same variation. Knight to f6, e3, c5, c3, knight to c6, knight to d2, queen to b6 by black, again putting pressure on your pawn. Queen to b3, again, you are challenging that. If, if black takes, we are going to discuss that, but that's not a problem for white. c4 again, queen to c2, bishop to f5 is now just a blunder of a piece because queen takes f5, and if queen takes b2, you can play rook to b1, chasing the queen away to a3 and simply winning winning a pawn. So you are, you are up a bishop, and that's clear. So one tempo can be very crucial. This is not the only example. We are going to have a look at multiple examples as we go through the separate videos. This just goes to show that this knight isn't a crucial piece for the London system. What signifies the London system is this. You have a bishop on f4, you have these three pawns, your knight naturally is developed to d2, and in most variations, your bishop is going to be developed uh, on uh, d3 on the d3 square. In some cases it's going to go to e2, but this is basically it. You go knight d2, bishop to d3, and this is your setup. Let's just give a stupid move to black. So this is the London system. These two bishops, this knight. This knight on g1 is not a part of it. Therefore playing knight f3 is objectively an inferior move. And this is the opinion of top players today, and this is what the modern theory says. Okay, so let's look at another downside of the move knight to f3 before we move on. So d4, uh, let's say d5, knight to f3. By playing the move knight to f3, you're giving black an option. Now let's continue in the normal fashion, bishop to f4. In this position, c5, e3. White has given black the option to play the move bishop to g4. This is very important. If you don't play your knight to f3, bishop g4 is... A weaker move. It basically doesn't have him give him the option to exchange the knight, which may or may, may not be important, but this is another finesse which you are simply allowing uh, black to do. So bishop g4 is a pin that's possible here. As we said, you want your bishop on d3, not on e2, so your queen may be hindered. So this is not a normal variation, but let's imagine this happens. Bishop to g4, you continue with c3, and queen b6 now. now queen b6 put pressure, puts pressure on b2. You would like to play queen to b3, but hey, Bishop takes, and I'm sorry, and your pawn structure is compromised all of a sudden. I'm not saying this is horrible for white, I'm just saying that knight to f3 gives black uh, multiple options as opposed to bishop to f4. So, uh, if we look at the starting position, uh, I would say that both moves can be played, both knight to f3 and bishop f4 on move 2, they are both fine. Knight f3 and bishop f4 will most likely lead to similar or transposed positions, but there is something else. So this question of which move should you play on move 2 has to be considered. I would recommend if you are afraid to show that you play the London system very early on, if you're playing against an opponent with a versatile opening repertoire, then maybe start with knight to f3, give him the option to 
to go wrong, to go into something that you are more comfortable with. If you're not afraid to play the London system against any setup, then bishop to f4. And here we come to the to the main point. So the London system is easy to learn. Why is it easy to learn? Because you play it against anything. Whatever black plays, you play the London system. If you go c4, now of course you could be facing uh, the Grunfeld still, well, the Grunfeld hardly after d5, but you could be playing, you could be facing the Queen's Gambit decline, the Slav, the Semislav, the Budapest, several openings. If uh, after d4 black goes knight f6 and you go c4, you could be facing the Grunfeld, the King's Indian, uh, the Benoni, uh, several variations. If after knight f6 you play bishop to f4, you're playing the London system, and that's it. The downside is black gets to choose the setup. Black gets to choose the nature of the position, and black sort of dictates what you are going to be doing. The three main uh, ways for black to play, which we are going to divide into seven sub uh, setups for black are either starting with d5 or with knight f6. If he starts with d5, and that we are going to cover in one video in detail, uh, black could go for a symmetrical setup, simply copying what you are doing, so doing something like this, d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4, bishop f5, e3, e6. Uh, this is the symmetrical setup, which I have played for two years, and this is my way to fight the London system or used to be, uh, which is fine. If he doesn't want to go for that, after bishop to f4, he can play the normal d5 positions, which we reached already in this position. These are the positions with, with c4. There are also very, very interesting setups, which I prefer now, which start after d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4, uh, positions with the very early c5 for, for black, and then e3, and the very early queen b6. This is quite different to what we've seen before, forcing white basically to play the move knight to c3, which is the best move. At the end of the series, I'm going to cover this separately as my weapon against the London system and my preferred way to play against the opening. So this is going to be biased and subjective, but this is just for me to show something from the black perspective because the whole series is going to be from white's perspective and it's going to be completely in white's favor and we are going to show a way how to fight each of these. So the first way to play is d4, d5, which as I said leads to either the symmetrical positions or positions with c5, queen b6, stuff like that. Uh, the other way for, uh, for black to play are knight f6 setups. Knight f6 setups can be divided into multiple different uh, variations. We are going to have a look at a few. The first one, which is very important, is d4, knight f6, regardless of whether you continue with bishop f4 or, or, or knight to f3, let's say bishop to f4, we are going to be looking at the early c5 setups. This is tricky. This is not the same. Uh, a separate video is going to be made on these. These are sort of uh, Benoni... Uh, type positions which uh, black is trying to enter, basically striking at your center with c5 without letting you complete your London system pawn triangle with c3, e3, and basically taking a stand in the center before you do anything. This is a very, very important setup. Another example could be knight f6, knight f3, e6, bishop to f4, c5. And in this position after e3, knight c6, c3, black is playing a flexible system uh, with the option of, of course, capturing here. Uh, more setups, uh, one which we are going to be looking at in a separate video is the Queen's Indian setup. So after d4, knight f6, bishop f4, e6, knight to f3, black plays the move b6. This is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to fight the London system. And what you are going to see throughout the detailed videos uh, as we go over each setup black can play, normally players with black are going to have an opening they play against d4. So if a player plays the Queen's Indian against d4, he's probably going to know how to play the Queen's Indian against the London system. It is therefore important for white to have something against each of these setups. I'm going to try to show you that. Another way for black to play uh, against uh, the London system after the move knight to f6 is a Grunfeld type setup, which is very important to know. So g6, bishop f4, bishop g7, e3, castles, let's say bishop to e2, which is the best move, and d5. This is the Grunfeld defense for black. So basically with the London system, what you are doing, you are ignoring what black is doing, 
and black has to ignore what you are doing. He has to go for a setup he likes. So black could basically play the Grunfeld defense against your London system. Of course, the difference is your pawn is not on c4, therefore the normal theory is not applicable. Okay, one of the major uh, setups for black, of course, and the setup which was originally called the London system when white played it is the King's Indian setup. So knight to f3, g6, bishop f4, bishop to g7, e3, castles, bishop e2, d6. Again, white is playing the London system, black is ignoring him and playing the King's Indian defense. This was originally known as the London system. So the King's Indian defense is one of the major setups for black and you simply have to know what you are doing against this. This is going to be a very long detailed video uh, which in which we are going to cover all the options for white weight basically and we are going to be looking at the best ways to, to play against that. Uh, other setups which you very well could meet are the Chigorin, so d4, d5, knight to f3 or bishop f4, knight to c6 in which black doesn't commit his c pawn, he simply develops his knight. Now this is slightly dubious for black, but it's perfectly playable. And playing a normal London system without knowing what you're doing could be quite tricky. And therefore a separate video on the London system against the Chigorin is going to be made. And finally, we are going to be looking at what to do against the Dutch players. I've had this question several times. Can you play the London against the Dutch defense? Yes, you can. It's not too popular, but if you know what you're doing, the London system can be extremely versatile weapon. And neutralizing the Dutch is one of the things that it's good at accomplishing. So for example, knight to f3, uh, knight to f6, bishop to f4, e6, e3. Again, white is ignoring black, black is ignoring white. You are playing the London system, he is playing the Dutch. So these setups we are going to be looking at. Seven different uh, opening setups for black and we are going to go over the London system against each of these and what is the optimal way to play it. Because even though the London system is always the same, and you play the London system, you have to know the finesses. You cannot play the London system the same way against the Grunfeld, the Dutch, and the King's Indian. It just won't work. You're going to, you're going to well, lose. One other thing which I'm going to mention is the so-called, according to Simon Williams, one of the main exponents of the, of the London system, uh, the Jabava London system, which he named after Badur Jabava, uh, the Georgian one of the or perhaps the best Georgian player. Uh, this is a move actually popularized by Badr Jubava and Richard Rapport. Uh, quite a weird move. This is the Chigorin, of course, for, for white. But you don't play the normal Chigorin, you play the London system. So after knight to f6, play bishop f4. And for example, after bishop to f5, you can now go f3 for an early e4, or you can go e3 for the normal London system with bishop to d3. So this I'm going to mention in several videos as a recommendation against different setups. I'm not going to make a separate video on it. You can watch uh, Simon Williams's video on the Jabava London system, which is amazing. I'm going to recommend it against a few setups with uh, which black can play, and we are going to go over uh, knight c3 ideas in the London. So what's the London? Uh, as I said, it's a setup which you can play against any opening black chooses. We are going to cover seven different openings for black in detail. Here I'm just going to show you some ideas. The first uh, game I'm going to show you as an example is the game played between Gata Kamsky and Alexei Goganov, in which Gata Kamsky used the London system to win uh, with very, very thematic London system patterns. So here I'm just going to show you the common plans and ideas for white. So d4, d5 was played by Alexei Goganov. Bishop to f4, Gatakamsky doesn't start with knight to f3. Knight to f6, e3, c5, and now c3, of course, can be played. Gatakamsky played the move knight to f3 first. And after knight c6, knight b to d2, he chooses to allow black the option of capturing here twice, which is okay. Uh, it wouldn't lead to bad positions. It just wouldn't be a normal London. But after e6, we now have c3, and we have completed our London system setup. The only thing left to do is to play the move bishop to d3. So basically, you can divide the London system into three stages. Get the bishop outside of the pawn chain, close the pawn chain with e3, c3, and then get your knight to d2, your bishop to d3. Those are the three stages, and you are playing the London system. This is the most thematic setup you can have. Bishop to d6, this is very common, challenging the bishop. You don't want to take, uh, leave uh, the tension 
to, to black leave the initiative to black, you retreat your bishop. If black wants to take, then you open up the h file, which can be very, very important. Because it gives you rook scope, of course, and black isn't really castling queenside against the London system, especially in d5, c5 setups, that would be extremely risky. So castles, and now bishop to d3, finishing your development, your bishop goes to the most natural square, uh, and of course, you now have your setup complete, stage 3 complete. Here, before we move on to the game, uh, comes Kei Gogano. I'm going to show you one pattern in the London system, which is very powerful. Let's say black plays rook to e8, which is a normal move. One thing which you can see that the London system provides, this pawn structure, it provides your knight with the square on e5. And this is a very important attacking idea. Now, even though I've said the London system is a calm, solid opening, and basically the idea is you don't want to allow black to push through your center with either c5 or e5, because you have two defenders of d4, that's the main difference. Even though it's a very solid opening, hard to break through, it's also a very attacking opening at the same time. And that's exactly what makes it popular. Popular. That's what makes it good. In this position, you may be wondering, well, what happens if takes? That is one of the main moves. Bishop takes, pawn takes is the idea. And this bishop may seem bad at first glance. Firstly, the knight has to move knight to d7 and you continue with f4. This is a very common pattern in the London system. What you have done is you have removed the f6 knight. You have removed the main defender in black's position. And this e5 pawn is served as a battering ram through black's position. It's considered, and since Nimtsovich, or maybe even before, that having a pawn on e5 as white is a huge asset in the attack because it just makes it much, much harder to defend. So now you can already see ideas of queen h5 bishop to h7, getting your other knight into play to g5 or to h4, maybe transferring your bishop to h4 to even further put pressure on this diagonal, maybe continuing with h4, h5, maybe castling queen side. So let's give a move to black. Let's say black plays b6, trying to fianchetto his bishop. You continue with queen to g4, or queen to h5, maybe even g6. Now the dark squares are weak. Maybe queen h6 and this will work. So queen h6, if, if black is not careful, what do you do here? How do you continue this position? So here and game over. Knight takes, pawn takes, checkmate. So you could checkmate fairly quickly in the London system. It's an attacking setup in which patterns like knight e5 are common. Therefore, it's risky to take the knight on e5. Okay, another pattern which uh, we are going to be seeing throughout the, the detailed videos is playing the move e4, simply breaking open the structure to your own advantage. So let's say queen to e2, reinforcing e4. This is a common way to develop in the London. Bishop b7, rook to d1, rook to e8, and now e4. Taking is okay, probably better than what happened in the game. If I'm black, I would take this pawn, although tactically it's quite hard to, to survive that too. In the game, bishop to e7 was played, which is oof, e5. And again, this pawn on e5, serves as a battering ram, divides black's position in two. It is now extremely hard to get these pieces to defend the king. You have basically split black's position in half. These are the types of ideas that the London system provides. At the same time, you have this wonderful bishop, these two knights and the queen in the attack. So let's see what happened. A3 played, c4, bishop to b1, g6, knight to f1. Where is this knight going? This knight is going to e3. From e3, it's coming to g4. From g4, it's coming into one of these two squares. Very, very scary. b5 played by, by black. Knight e3, a5, knight g4. How do you defend? It's already extremely unpleasant. Both kings are in the center. But this London system, c3, d4, safety of the pawn structure makes white king the white king basically immune. b4, queen to e3. The queen is looking at the h6 square. The queen is looking at f4. The queen is looking at g5. The queen is coming to the king side. bc3, bc3. Okay, they, there are queen side weaknesses. If black is given time, if white does nothing, then sure, this could be very dangerous and you could start winning pawns. But white doesn't care about that. Uh, b takes c3. Black plays queen to b8. Of course, white is hanging a pawn here, but doesn't matter. Bishop f4 coming into the dark squares. Bishop c8. Bishop g5, offering a strategic exchange to further his plans in the attack. Taking is bad, not taking is bad. Uh, rook to b3, black is doing exactly what I'd suggested, but worrying about queenside pawns when your king is under pressure, not a good idea. h4, 
queen b6, bishop to c2, trying to evict the rook, forcing it to take. Bishop takes e7, and now once the dark square defender has been exchanged, queen to h6. Now, what do you do about knight f6? Knight f5 was played, trying to chase the queen away, but now bishop takes f5, simply capturing. e takes f5, knight to g5. You're threatening mate in one. Knight to f6 has to be played, but now knight to e3. The idea of knight to e3 is simply, well, saving a piece and rerouting the knight back. f4, and now a deadly, deadly uh, tactic. I'm hoping you can see it after f4. Of course, white doesn't move the knight. White plays knight takes d5, and this is game over. Uh, the knight has to move. If it moves, it leads to checkmate. If it doesn't move, then still, it's, it's game over. Uh, queen to d8 was played, and believe it or not, in this position, uh, white simply castled, and that's it. That's that's the end of the game. Uh, in this position, of course, if queen takes, I'm sorry, sorry for doing this. If queen takes knight, then pawn takes, and there are no more tricks. That's why he castled. Now it's checkmate here. So the London system can be deadly. Another example of of a less deadly attack. This is the game Magnus Carlsen versus Exan Gaem. Magami uh, from the Olympiad, I think 2016. So we have d4, d5 again. Knight f3 by Magnus, knight f6, bishop f4, e6, e3. Normal uh, London system stuff, d4, d5, knight b2, d2. And in this position, bishop takes g3, h takes g3 was played. So, uh, black has decided to exchange the London system bishop. Well, what happens in that case? As we see, this rook can be very, very dangerous. Queen d6 by black. Bishop to b5. Magnus doesn't play bishop to d3. He exerts pressure over the e5 square. That means that the knight is coming into e5, whatever happens. Bishop d7. But now a strategic exchange takes on c6, takes on c6. Who is guarding the e5 square? Nobody. So knight e5. These two pieces are worth much more than the two rooks. In fact, I would say that the knight alone is worth more than the two rooks in this in this exact position. This is now extremely hard to defend. Already, what has black done wrong? He exchanged the bishop, but that's not a mistake in itself, but the London system just provides easy attacking patterns. Queen to c7 played in this position, and queen to f3, bringing the queen into the attack. h6, queen to f4, threatening some discoveries on the queen on c7, of course. Uh, queen to e7, unpinning. g4, another very common pattern. If black takes your bishop on g3, then the g4 pawn is cannon fodder. You can just sacrifice it to open the position up. g5, knight h7 play to stop g5. Now queen to g3, rook to g8, castles, calmly castles. Knight f6, rook a to c1. And now he has induced some weaknesses. g5 is definitely a possibility. But Magnus being Magnus switches to the other side of the board and now gets a winning position on the queen side as well. Breaks open the position and he easily got a winning advantage later on. I don't want to get into the game too much. I just wanted to show you the main patterns. So throughout the detailed videos, we are going to be looking at these ideas like knight e5 or e4 or what happens when black simply takes on g3. There are going to be ideas in each set of black and play. So in the separate seven videos, and again, we are going to go over d5 setups for black, king's Indian setups, queen's Indian setups, setups with an early c5, Grunfeld setup, Dutch setups, and Chigorin setups. We are going to look over we are going to look at ideas for white against each of these. And hopefully at the end of the series, you will be prepared to play the London system against any opening. Now, that being said, uh, here's my subjective opinion. If you are a weak player like me, uh, don't play the London system because it's, I believe, too easy to play it well and you don't get challenged as much. Of course, going for main lines with the Queen's Gambit or playing e4, gives black a lot more options. You will have to learn a lot more theory. You, you will have to play a lot more types of positions. Playing the London system, you will play the same five to 10 positions all the time. That means that you have restricted your play with the white pieces to all together, maybe 10 different openings. If you want best, better results early on, the London system is great. If you want better results in the long term and you want to improve your chess faster, I would advise you to just go for E4 and play the main lines. 
Okay, uh, I hope you liked this introductory video. Uh, stay tuned for the other seven videos. And as I said, at the end of the series, I'm going to go over my weapon against the London system, the only, the only video that will be done from Black's perspective. And I hope you like this. Let me know what you think, please. Uh, bye bye and stay tuned for more chess. See you tomorrow.